I'm Fabian Vogelsteller. I work with the Ethereum Foundation. Um, I built a lot of things over the last few years. I built Web3.js, I built the Initial Mist browser, I built the Ethereum wallet. Now people know me because I introduced the ESC20 token center together with Vitalik. So Ethereum went obviously to a lot of like turbulences, crazy things happening with the DAO, DDoS attacks and a lot of things happened since then. And it grew a lot in, in size and transaction uh, numbers. Synchronization gets slower because there's so much happening on the network right now. But I matured a lot in terms of like the community learned what can go wrong, how to make things better. A lot of better tooling came up and we're still progressing. And, and developing this, this, this software and this, this network. There's a lot to do still. I mean, I would really love to see sharding and like scalable blockchain solutions coming about because this is a very dire need right now. I think what I find really exciting is that now we figure out by standardizing things, like for example the ESC20 token, and like agreeing on a basic set of interfaces, it creates this whole explosion of experimentation where then we can suddenly create an experiment at the same time being compatible and interoperable. Uh, for example, the token shows it very well, it's a very simple standard, but because everybody follows it, every exchange can integrate it, every wallet can use it, and the token functionality and how they work internally doesn't need to be determined by the standard itself. I think we will see a lot of more um, tools build, built on top of Ethereum. For example, now with uh, the ability to verify CK SNARKs on, in smart contracts, all of these extra pre-compile contracts we have, we will see a lot of like tools built on top and which extend the functionality a lot. We will see state channels and things like this being used. Really, it's about the crown layer, layer we have and the kind of functions. Now it's about finding standards for a lot of things, building a lot of tools on top and then well, the sky is the limit, I would say. <laughs> the question is, do we want to have mass adoption yet? <laughs> um, I would say the roadblocks obviously are scaling, right? So we need scalability. We can do a lot through state channels and payment channels. Uh, the Raiden network, for example, is a really awesome contribution, which would help a lot with these things. We already have a lot of traction. If uh, even more traction comes, that might just be critical at some point, like through loading a lot of things off chain, but actually using the blockchain only as a settlement layer or as a like final truth, which if you construct it right, don't need to uh, use that often, we can already have today a lot of scalability. So the other part obviously is uh, usability. A lot of the blockchain stuff is very nerdy, it's still very complicated. Having good user interfaces, also having a good way of handling private keys, actually using them in the secure elements of your phones, uh, attaching your biometric data to it, having an easy way to, to restore it or regain it if you lose your keys, for example. I think we also have to move a lot more away from the fact of using a account, a one account, versus starting to use proxy accounts or proxy contracts and have replaceable keys so that a loss of key is not so traumatic as it is today. Once we have all of these UX challenges ironed out and we will see like mass adoption will be super easy because it will happen in a way that people don't even know that they're using the blockchain most of the time. They will use applications, they will use tools and they will use new ways of think doing things together. The blockchain will be just a road under the hood. I'm currently working on this new standard. Um, I initiated it and it's a standard uh, contract interface about an, ad inter an identity. So the idea is basically when we agree to a basic set of functions a identity smart contract can, can have and how it can look like, we are able to, to spur this whole innovation around how identity can look, how we attest things about each other. There's a lot of projects we actually really want to include and introduce this. But right now, it always fails on the fact that nobody really wants to adopt something. They don't know if it would be forever uh, uh, still there. And especially identity is a very long lasting thing. This standard is called right now ERC-725. It is flexible enough and easy enough that it can allow all of kind of things without restricting too much. But at the same time, give the necessary interface to have like a basic start interaction. And from that on, we can have a lot of experimentation, the same we see with the tokens. And we will see where this goes. 
I think the key benefits of, of having a one unique identity of yourself, I mean, besides the fact that you could technically in the future have an automatic border control or uh, all kind of certifications like university or whatever you do, uh, easier, automatically retrievable and don't have to store your documents at home all the time or have them in archives of, of agencies, is that you can have this unique profile which, with whom you can walk around online and in the future in VR and all these virtual worlds we will have. Because currently we, uh, we have our uh, profiles and identities spread over so many data silos like we have a Facebook account and Twitter and da 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 da. But none of this we really want to use forever because we don't even know if the companies will be around. So probably this will disappear and we move to something else. And having this one linkage which really represents us over time, we can basically attach the things we find important and we want to have public ourselves to this one single point, then we can suddenly have all these platforms using it. And I don't have to create another account and another login and another username for the hundred thousand times. Yeah, it's about like finding the right agreement, talking, figuring out the right solution. On the end, every standard we create today will not be the standard forever, but it will be the first step. And standards evolve, standards extend over time, they get better, they get improved, they get replaced sometimes. So having this first experimentation around it and having this common agreement where a lot of startups and tools can then suddenly use it and integrate it and suddenly they are interoperable. And I think this is a good start, the CF25 is a good start and let's see if we will end up using it or not. I'm very passionate about um, Obviously the Ethereum space, I love the community, I love how people all want to share and they want to build together and there's never really I get the feeling that people try to hide their, their businesses or their ideas because they have the feeling that maybe somebody else will get it first. Everybody's sharing, sharing, sharing and like talking and pinging, ping-ponging ideas all the time. What I'm super excited about is this idea of what Commit ETH and Gitcoin doing, if we have a system which allows you to easily fund issues, for example, in, in the open source world, GitHub, and then people are able to get the money when they resolve these issues, we will suddenly have an actual money economy around open source projects, which right now we don't have at all. And uh, right now you do it for yourself most of the time because you need it, and on the end you end up getting a reputation over time when you did a good, good thing, but uh, there's mostly no real monetary outcome. But at the same time, you have a lot of people who have a lot, want to use and do use a lot of open source projects, but they might not have the, uh, the right knowledge to fix certain things or add features, but they really want to have it and they would be willing to pay for it because maybe it helps with their project and they get their client stuff faster done. So there is this need, but right now it cannot be fulfilled. If you solve this automation on the blockchain where people can tip box issues on GitHub and other people can basically get that once they are resolving it, this will create a whole new economy, I think. I personally, for example, I'm very excited about VR. It's just uh, we're going to change the world completely and how we interact and how we, uh, we work and the blockchain or, for example, identity plays a really good uh, role in that because once you have all these digital worlds which then not only are like websites I'm looking at but actually like spaces I will be, spaces where I will meet people, games I will play, leagues I will participate in, competition or friendship or social whatever and this all in complete new different like virtual spaces. Then I need the blockchain to be the same person everywhere, to carry my thing, to carry my money, to carry my, my property around in the virtual space. The blockchain is the perfect base layer for that.